Hey, it's Lori Ballen in Las Vegas with another episode of 365 Days of KW Command. Today, I'm going to show you what started as a simple answer to a question is turning into a more detailed video. I'm going to talk today about the neighborhood boundaries and the IDX on our real estate websites, as well as the neighborhood nurtures and how we can create smart plans that work for us even better when it comes to these neighborhoods and um, and things like that. Uh, I do appreciate your referrals. I'm out here in Las Vegas and I serve Henderson and North Las Vegas with Lori Ballin team. My full time position on my team is that of the lead generator. I'm also a six figure affiliate marketer. So I do a lot with SEO, social media, blogging, and those types of things. My nature is to teach and train all of the strategies along the way. So that's why this 365 days of KW command series exists. In addition, I will let you know that if you see anything as we're going out about this video that you say, oh my goodness, I need more coaching or I need more help on that. My brothers, Jeff and Paul, at ballonbrands.com actually service um, KW Command websites. They build the websites, they do smart plans, they, they run your campaigns, they help with your imports, all of that. So make sure you reach out to them if you need more help with that. And I'll put a link to my coaching program in the video below. All right. So let's take a look here. I'm, I'm in contacts and I've opened my demo contact Tinkerbell. And um, I am going to go down to neighborhoods as if I were to add her to, to a neighborhood. Now, for those of you that don't know, when we add neighborhoods to a contact, we're then able to send out these neighborhood nurture emails that are basically kind of like a snapshot of the neighborhood and they go out automatically every two weeks on the bi-weekly nurture or every four weeks on the long-term nurture. So once a month, they get like this little snapshot of this is what's happening with the neighborhood. Now, a lot of us have found, and I'm just going to be really straight up honest with you, as much I do love a lot about KW Command, the database being my favorite. I really, really love what they've done with contacts and calendars and smart plans and tasks and all of that is fantastic. We can send text messages, if we connect Twilio, we can send bulk email, if we connect MailChimp. So we're still using some third party integrations to do the things we wanna do. That being said, commuting, communicating with our database with command is fantastic, my opinion. And I'm just gonna always be honest, okay? The websites I'm using, as you can see here, uh, with this website, I think they have a long way to go. Um, visually, for sure, uh, you know, being able to add things to the menus, but I've done about as much as, as, as I can do with what we have right now with the websites. And I teach those along the way, smart plans, the ability to add custom smart plans are fantastic, but these neighborhoods are really rough. And what I, why, I, what I mean by that is that from what I understand, the neighborhoods are populated with the next door boundaries. So if the neighborhood doesn't exist and isn't uh, mapped out like that, we're not going to be able to pull, pull it on a neighborhood boundary. We also can't pull things like 89138, which is a problem for people that, you know, in, in Vegas, for example, I'm in Vegas, all of our neighborhoods, our master plan communities are named by a, 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 a larger community name. Okay, so for example, I type in Southern Highlands. It doesn't come up on these neighborhoods and that's a known neighborhood here. Uh, we refer to an area as Chinatown. And in fact, I just got a lead for Chinatown yesterday from blogs that I write. I got nothing. All right, so you can see it in other areas, but I don't have Chinatown in Las Vegas. And then Summerlin. Now, Summerlin is a master plan community in Las Vegas that actually has uh, about a hundred thousand residents and it's it's not a city it is a master plan community now inside Summerlin the community we have these little neighborhoods that are called 
you know, that have like 2,000 homes, 4,000 homes, maybe only 1,000 homes. Those are like, like our villages, we call those. And inside the villages, we have sub subdivisions. Well, this doesn't work <laughs> at all with that. And it's a shame because Summerlin is like my, that's where I live. And it's, it's really a place that I love to market. So I have to do a lot of workarounds when I'm doing marketing using command because of that. I get a lot of leads and they say we want to live in Summerlin. All right, well, you, I cannot just populate Summerlin. And the question today was, can I pull a zip code? No, that's also a problem because if I could put 89138, 89148, 89145 and, and basically get the Summerlin zip codes, that would work too, but this doesn't work that way either. Okay, so then I could type in, does the city work? No, it doesn't. Okay, because I get it, the concept is this is designed for those small neighborhoods. It's not designed to give an overall view of the city. It's not a market report. It's a neighborhood snap. So their thought process was the little tiny neighborhood. So I live in the Vistas Village. So if I go to type in the Vistas, I can get there. You see the arbors, the vineyards, these are all villages inside Summerlin. So it's not that it doesn't work, it's that it's designed to be small neighborhood views, local, hyper, hyper local. So think of this neighborhoods as hyper local. I think the challenge is a lot of us are trying to use this in a way it wasn't designed necessarily for. And that makes it tough. Here's the, the concept is this. If I want to, t let's just say Tinkerbell has an address. So I'm going to go down here to addresses. And I'm going to give her an address. Okay. I give her an address, right? And then you click save. Now watch what happens in the neighborhoods. She was assigned a neighborhood called the Pueblo because that's where she lives. So the boundary is small enough that in an example of a next door neighborhood, anybody who lives right there in the Pueblo village, anything would be relative to them, a lost cat, a, you know, all, you know, the things they post on next door. So that's actually appropriate. The challenge is now these neighborhood snaps, if I put Tinkerbell on a smart plan, she's going to get a, um, a neighborhood snap of the Pueblo. So let me go to add, let me, let me look at this for a second. I don't know why that's not pulling up now correctly. Let's just add the vistas too. Okay. So you can add a neighborhood. Now let's, let's take a look at this. So you see what it looks like, what they see. I'm going to, I'm going to click preview. They get a little email and the email says, Hey, Tinkerbell, here's what's happening in your neighborhood. And you click preview. And then you get the Vistas North neighborhood snapshot. And here's the Vistas, there's the boundaries, and here's all the homes that are for sale in the Vistas. Now, if she clicks, even though I think this is, it would be very hard to even know this was here because it's so tiny. But if they were to click up here for neighborhood stats, then you could see there's 11 homes for sale within that. And this is the boundary that they have it mapped out. Um, it's close, not perfect, but it's close. 11 homes for sale, three pending. The average home price is 580,000. Price per square foot is 215. And the days on market is 126. 11 homes for sale, three pending. You can kind of see what that looks like, okay? The concept here would be more as a market snap for a homeowner. So she lives, Tinkerbell lives in this. I just pulled it to Vistas. Let's say she lives in the Vistas and every month I'm going to send this to her so that she can get an idea for what is happening in her neighborhood. Okay. I think we are trying to add um, people as buyers to these smart plans, which I've even done too, trying to figure out how to, how to best use command. And I don't really think that's the best use for this. Personally, I think this is people who live in a neighborhood and you want to send them a market snap on what's happening in their neighborhood. 
Now, how accurate this is, that's debatable as well. <laughs> now over here, I'm gonna go to the front of our website and let's say the person knows that they wanna live in the vistas. So we have the vistas north and we have the vista south. So that now it's pulling neighborhoods again here, right? So let's say the vistas uh, north. So now 119 days on market, the Vistas North has 602,000, which is higher than what the other view was. So see the map, see how it's identical? There's the map. We, over here, same map. It looks identical to me. I don't see any differences. Yet this one says average home price is 602, and this one says average home price is 580. So, this is where some of the challenge is coming in. We're making these designs, we're pulling in snaps, and we're noticing that the data doesn't exactly match up. So the first thing I would tell you is if you're making market reports and, and neighborhood snaps, you want to use the editable designs that allow you to change the numbers. There are some that will allow you to change the numbers. There's others that automatically populate from this same data and it doesn't match up. So let's just say I'm running an ad. I use one of those neighborhood snaps and I create a design and it and it's based on this one, the 580. And then I run and, and I'm running a Facebook ad and they can see that on that little image or something. And then they land on this page and these things don't match. Now, I will tell you that I don't overthink that. I don't I don't get concerned about the data not being perfect, but I I would be a little bit nervous about sending somebody a market snap on their neighborhood if it wasn't super accurate, okay? So let's just test this for a second. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to my MLS. What I'm really curious about is which one has is the closer one. So we're going to go here and I'm going to log in and do a quick search for the vistas. Let me see if this one pulls it up. Okay, we'll go to search and we're going to go to residential. And can I pull the vistas? Yes. All right, so let's pull active and under contract and take a look at what, how they're comparing here. All right, so one listing is showing up that's 480, and I think that is exactly what we were seeing. Sorry about that, let me get rid of those tabs. Oh, different listing. This one's 399. And this one is 480, so not even not the same listing at all showing up. Okay, so this is this is where our challenge is. This is where our challenge is. Now, if I let's see if I can pull the stats on that neighborhood. So we'll go to stats, customize, time frame. I don't know what they're um, using. I'll do year to date, and I'll do sales price median, and we'll do group by primary year, single family, the vistas. See, there's so many variables. Did you see how many things I just clicked to pull that market report? I don't know, we don't know without seeing. This is based on such and such and such and such. We don't really know what that is. All right, so we've only had one sale here um, in the vistas so far year to date. So let's go, let's do the past 12 months and see what comes up. Oh, that's the average. It's not one sale. It's the average. So 375 and 371. But see, the Vista's North, the Vista's South, we don't, they're not even like that in my MLS. <laughs> so it's a very strange, strange thing. Okay, so what I want to stress with this um, is use whichever one of these tools. I'm going to show you a workaround for something in a second. But use whichever of these tools actually apply to your person. Okay, so... If, if Tinkerbell, the lead, calls in 
And she says, and I talked to her and Tinkerbell says, Oh, Lori, I'm really interested in living in either Summerlin or Green Valley. I don't know if you guys have this where you are, but we get people that like no neighborhoods before they move here. So I'm going to live in Summerlin or Green Valley. Okay, I've got an option for that, which I'll show you in a second. Let's say she says, I want a, I want a uh, $300,000 house and four bedrooms. Well, I am not putting her on, an, on a, a neighborhood nurture. I'm putting her on my MLS drips and sending her information on houses. If she's comparing neighborhoods and says, you know what? I really don't know. I might like Desert Shores. I might like Summerlin. And this is somebody that's actually expressed interest in neighborhoods. Then I might put her on a neighborhood nurture to, to compare them. And it would look like this. So let's just say she says, you know, I'm, I, I might want to live in Desert Shores. I type this in and I add Desert Shores. And then underneath here, it makes other suggestions to um, neighborhoods that are nearby that you could add. But she tells me she she's wants a water property. So out here in Las Vegas, we have Desert Shores Lakefront. It's a lake man-made lake community. And we have the lakes, which is a man-made lake community. And there one is in the southwest and one is in the northwest. So, but they're all up on the west. So let's just say she says, okay, well, then I might want to live in the lakes. Well, that's a problem. I don't see it popping up. Let's see. Really? Hold on, let me refresh her and see if the search, if it pulls up the lakes. That's a pretty, pretty well-known neighborhood here. The lakes. Loss. No, it's not coming up. All right, well, let's just say she. I've got these two. I just want to show you what it looks like. The vineyards versus desert shore. So you see where the challenge is with the neighborhoods because we're not able just to pull up all of our neighborhoods like we can on our normal IDX websites or on the MLS. So um, we go here and then I preview her snapshot. And now she could toggle back and forth between the vineyards and desert shores. Up here, she could look at neighborhood stats and she could compare the two. But personally, I don't, we don't get that a ton. Most of the time people are looking for a particular price. They're looking for a particular school or they know they want Northwest or Southwest or, but very seldom do we get either this or that. I do have people that call and say Summer Lenore Henderson and we kind of walk them through the two and then they'll kind of narrow it down and start looking and decide which one they like the best. But this could be used for that purpose, okay? But I don't think it's a good idea to continually send them this month over month because we're not probably gonna have the most accurate data. This really isn't a great MLS search for them. So for me personally, I'm gonna use my preferred IDX search or my MLS to still put somebody on a home drip. And I've decided that I think neighborhoods are best used for um, somebody that lives in a particular neighborhood that just wants to see what listed and what has recently sold. That's probably what I would, I would use this for. So let's just take this a step further now. You, you realize this and say, okay, well, Tinkerbell is a year out. She's she's not shopping for a while. She doesn't really want a, an MLS drip, but I kind of want to keep a pulse on her. Maybe Tinkerbell registered on my website for my just listed homes in Summerlin, which I do these all the time. And she registered for that. And I don't want to put her on a direct MLS drip, but I want her to see homes that just listed in Summerlin. This is where our website and custom smart plans come in that are better than putting them on a neighborhood nurture. So let me show you what I mean. So we go to our website. So this is our KW agent website that they've given us, okay? And I go to type in here and I type in Summerlin. Okay, once again, I've got a challenge with this because it doesn't pull up my whole area of Summerlin. So here's what I'm gonna do instead. 
I'm going to go to Las Vegas and just hit it and get to my general map. Okay. So there's all, there's a thousand properties on this page that they've mapped out. Now, if I go up here to draw, I could zoom in on the map or I could get, I could get kind of close. It's still not ideal for drawing um, a map in a larger area. I need more screen to be able to do that. But I know that in general, Summerlin is up here on, let's see, draw. There we go. Is like going to be here to about, <laughs> it's not going to be perfect at all, but I'm just giving you a general idea. Now watch the houses will populate here in a second. They will. It just takes a minute. Where are you? Hold on. Maybe I have more something selected. Let me clear the filters. All right. Hold on. I don't know why that's not drawing. Let's try it again. Draw. There they go. Keep in mind when you're using a beta software of any kind like command, sometimes it takes two or three times to do something to get it to work. I do a lot of refreshes. They also suggest that we do these things in an incognito mode to get it to work the best. All right. Anyway, this is a this is a, a poor man's workaround and it's not bad. It's not ter it's not great, but it's not bad. If I were to zoom in on this a little bit, I could see what areas I missed and I could uh, take that down just a little bit, but at least I'm in the general ballpark of if somebody's just poking around and wants to see. Okay. Now we can also sort this by a couple of different things. So first of all, property type. So we know she's looking for a house. I can just change that to be a house. If at all she discussed price and she said, Oh, I'm, I, well, I'm probably looking at about, I don't know, up to, 500,000. Then I could set that default there. Okay. You can still see the map and it shows this is definitely enough for somebody to start looking. Now, let's say you want to sort this by, um, instead of by price, you want to sort it by days on market because when she get, when we set up our smart plan to send her this link, we want it to be listed by homes that just hit the market first. So put days on market and then low to high. Days on market, low to high. So this, these are going to be homes that literally just listed, just listed, and then it'll go in order from there. This to me is a great way to get somebody back on our website browsing, uh, logging in, saving homes, that kind of thing. It gives us a way to communicate. Okay. Now, if let's just say we make an offer, we run a Facebook ad and we say, see all homes in Summerlin under 500,000. So this link could be used for many purposes now. So here's what I do. I open a new tab and I open bit, B-I-T dot L-Y. This is what I use for my tiny URLs. Whatever, if you're, whatever simple, whatever you're using for simple URLs, this is, this is what I am using right now. So take this, um, let me get out of there. Take this long, ugly URL with all the numbers and strings because that is the address to this page. Click copy and then go over to um, Bitly and paste it in here and click create. Now, Bitly has a free version. I don't know at what point you have to pay and what, you know, for certain kinds of tracking, but I think I have the free version. So paste long URL right here and then click create. Now I'm going to give this a title and this is my Summerlin under 500 K and I have this sort of sorted by newest listings first. 
That way I never have to worry about what that URL was again. It's saved here in my bit.ly. I can go grab it anytime I want it. Okay. So all I have to do now is click copy. And this little bit.ly we're going to use in our smart plan. Okay. Now here's what we do next. Now we're going to go to our smart plans. So this little guy here is our smart plans on the left. I'm going to open that in a new tab. And now I'm going to go to create. We're going to create a new smart plan and I'm going to call this Summerlin under 500 K. So this would be where you want to set up a neighborhood link or something that you're going to use frequently. You've got a lot of people that want, you could just do all of Las Vegas. Here's what's happening in Las Vegas. Actually, that's a fantastic one. So hold on. Let's do that one real quick because I'll use this all the time. So I might as well do one for real. So if I go up here and just type in Las Vegas. Okay, now we're back to Las Vegas. And I have this. Um, I'll leave it on 500 or less and on houses. And I have it sorted by days on market low to high. This is perfect. So let's take this one. Long URL. We go over to Bitly. Click create. Paste. Create. Add title. Las Vegas houses under 500K. Newest first. The only person that sees that title is you. Save. Copy the Bitly link. Okay, there we go. So now, instead of, if anybody registers on my website for any reason, any kind of just listed or they registered for, because they're just generally browsing IDX, I haven't talked to them. I don't know what's happening yet, but they've registered. I'm going to put them on a smart plan. So we're going to, uh, let me rename this one and I'm going to call this one Las Vegas Homes Under. 500k newest first. Okay, that's the name of the smart plan. Now I am going to send an email. Subject line just listed homes in Las Vegas. Email content hi, and now we're going to do a merge field. First name. I wanted to make sure you had, nope, I'm gonna keep this really simple. Hi, thank you for registering on valenvegas.com. Here's a list of homes that were just listed in Las Vegas. Call or text seven oh. You know what? I'm going to loop this. So let me just do this. I'll show you what I mean by loop in a second. Here's a list of homes that were just listed in Las Vegas. Call or text 702-604-7739 to view properties or narrow your search criteria. Okay. Um, Hi blank. Here is a list of homes that were just listed in Las Vegas. Okay. I want to make sure I can um, reuse that email. So now we're going to Lori Valentine. Okay. Now we got to put in our link. So here's a list of homes that were just listed in Las Vegas. So I'm going to highlight list of homes. I'm going to click this little link and I'm going to paste in that link. So now when they get the email, that will work. Now, if I wanted to, I could also send a text. Now, let me give you some tips on this. If one, in order to send a text message that's automated, you have to activate Twilio. Twilio is not free, but it's cheap. It's pretty inexpensive in my opinion. It, so you do pay when you send a text. Okay. So you got to have Twilio activated if you want to send a text. If you don't have Twilio activated and you add this 
SMS text message in here and you create a text message, it shows up in your tasks, in your to-dos. So no automation and you get a task. Some of you may like that. I, I don't like that at all, especially when I'm dealing with a whole bunch of leads because that task list just gets too heavy. I want everything as automated as I possibly can get it. Now, obviously, if I'm going to call somebody, I might have to add the call as a to-do. Also, if you add the text and you have Twilio activated and it's ready to be automated, yet the lead does not have a phone number, it also will then just show up as a manual to do. Okay, so you might want to have two separate smart plans that are identical, but one not identical, they're similar, except for one does not include text messages and one does. So then if you have a phone number, you could put them on the text one. If they don't, you put them on the email, then you avoid all those manual tasks showing up in your to do. So my suggestion is to clone, create your campaign, clone it, and then choose one that has text and one that, one that doesn't. Just remove this to remove it. So let's just say we do, here's the email. And then we also want to send him a text message. So hi, first name. Here is your list of the newest homes. Up oh, here is your list of homes just listed in Las Vegas. Now here you cannot hover over a set of keywords and attach a link. This is why we did the bit.ly because now you can paste it and it's a short link instead of that long link. So here's your list of homes uh, just listed in Las Vegas. Call 702-604-7739 to view homes or change your criteria. Okay, I feel good about texting that. So I would have no problem. Now, in this particular case, we did not put a delay in between these two. So they would get the email and the text message on the same day. If you don't want that to happen, then you could set a delay. So I'm going to add that. It goes to the bottom down here. So set, let's just say we want these to be three days apart. Then I'm going to move that up and now the delays in the middle so they'll get um oops i need to move that up one more mm, hold on there we go so now they get the in this case they get the text message first then it waits three days and then it sends them the email i don't mind sending an email and a text message on the same day because they'll just go, oh, she, she also emailed me. Sometimes it's weird to get the exact same email and three days later get the same text message. That might be a little bit weird. So in my case, I'm going to send them both out on the same day because my hope is that, oh, shoot. Is there an undo? My I just deleted the um, text message. I meant to delete this one. I don't see an undo delete, so... I just want to remove the delay. Okay. All right. So in this campaign, I just want to do email anyway. So we've got an email that goes out. Okay. Now the next thing you can do is you can add a delay and then restart the flow. So how often do you want this person to get this message? Is it, do you want it to be a weekly campaign where they get a new list of homes that were just acted? You know, you want it to be bi-weekly. Do you want it to be every three weeks? Do you want it to be once a month? So what we're going to do is we're going to add that set delay and we're going to say, let's send it to them every 14 days. Now we're going to add the restart flow option. So what it does now, how many times do you want this to repeat? Unlimited, because I want them either telling me to go away or I want them to talk to me. So what this does now is it's this right. The way I have it now is it's just email. They get this, here's a list of homes that were just listed. This, when they click that link of just listed homes, it goes to this page, which is dynamic. It updates dynamically. So every time a new home hits, it'll change. So they won't be looking at the same thing every time they click that link. 
it'll be different. It'll be constantly changing. Okay, so we have, here's the list of homes, call or text. It waits two weeks and then it restarts the flow, which means they get this message again, all over again. And if I had a text in here, if I had any delays, if I had a phone call to do, if I had anything else, that would, it would repopulate. Now, there's also an add to smart plan. So you could let this run once and then you could send them off to another smart plan by adding this. This is a really cool feature. So I put that at the bottom. We've got, uh, let me move that down one. So you have, um, whoops, moved down the wrong one. I keep doing that. Okay, to get the email. Then set delay, wait two weeks. And then instead of restart the flow, you could add them to one of your other smart plans. So this way you're putting people in a series of moving smart plans so that they're not always getting the same thing so that things are changing. Okay. So I'm, I don't need to add them to smart plans. So I'm going to delete that. Be careful about deleting because it's hard to tell which X, which ones go with which. Um, okay, so we have send an email, wait two weeks and restart the flow. Now the catch to this, let's go ahead and add Tinkerbell to this plan. So I'm going to um, save the smart plan. Okay, now I can add Tinkerbell from here by clicking on that little uh, person icon typing in Tinkerbell, there she is, SOI, add to smart plan. Now, do I wanna start this right now or do I wanna start it on a selected date? Right now is fine, so oh, start now. Okay, now it tells you that if you have a Twilio account set up, all text messages will, will be automatic. Here's what the flow looks like. It is one touch, three steps. So one touch means she's only getting this one message delay is 14 days so the steps delay is a step repeat is a step three steps one touch if i had a text message in there it would be four steps and two touches okay and then com confirm now you can also add anybody to a smart plan by looking at that contact you can click here to add to a smart plan or you can click here to add to a smart plan and here you can see all of the smart plans that she's already on so I may not want Tinkerbell on a monthly neighborhood nurture because now I have her on my uh, regular plan. The key to all of this right now, until they give us the ability to stop a campaign, uh, stop a smart plan or initiate a smart plan based on a tag or an action, you have to know to go take them off. And that's gonna be a little bit tricky. So if I've got Tinkerbell now on this bi-weekly Las Vegas search, but let's just say now I talk to Tinkerbell, she says, you know what, I'm moving, in, I'm moving here. If things got moved up and I'm so excited, I'm going to be there next month. So please send me three bedroom under this with a pool, blah, blah, blah. Then you're going to want to put her on your own MLS search and send those to her and take her off of the bi-weekly drip that would be too broad now based on what she's looking for. So you have to be really savvy with um, with using your database here to communicate with people and move people in and out of these plans as appropriate, uh, you know, as appropriately. So everybody, every buyer lead that comes in that registers should be on some sort of a smart plan. But now that we have the ability to make our own, we can do things like this. Okay. So just keep in mind that these are all surface searches that are really designed to generate interest. These are where we're going. We'll look more when they give us the ability to send recurring searches based on property types and whatnot, how accurate those are and when we want to start doing that. But I, I don't think we're at that point yet today um, at the time of making this video. So hopefully this helps, gives you an idea. I want to tell you, give you one more tip. When we were doing this search earlier today, 
I was trying to pull all of the Summerlin neighborhoods by doing this. 89135, 89128, 89145. That does not work. <laughs> yeah, just to let you know, as you, that does not work. It pulls in everything. So what, what it's doing is it, it'll pick one of those zip codes. So even though it allows you to do that, that does not function right. But you can absolutely do 89145 and pull, and there's your little map with everything on the bullet points. So, and, and early, remember, we were trying to find the lakes. The lakes, Las Vegas, there it is. So I don't know why we couldn't pull it on the neighborhood search, the neighborhood search, but we can pull it on the front end of the IDX. So just make sure that you're, you first just kind of play with these a little bit and take advantage of this front end search and your ability to send links through text message and through email, because in my opinion, sending them here to your website is gonna be way better than sending them those little neighborhood nurtures that really weren't designed for buyers to be browsing. And if, you're, if your person doesn't live in a designated neighborhood, then it's probably just best not to put them on one of those searches for a market snap. I would put them on a monthly market report that's a little better designed, in my opinion, for right now. So anyway, hopefully that helps you. I'm Lori Ballin in Las Vegas with 365 days of KW Command.